Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video here on a GPU. So this one, this time we're gonna be taking a look at the ASRock Creator AMD Radeon AI Pro R 9700. So this is the ASRock version of the card that we looked at earlier from XFX. So this one says here, there's a couple things on the back. This one, in addition to being the blower style reference design, it has a die cast metal shroud and a vapor chamber as well as Honeywell PTM 7950. So I like that ASRock actually points all this out because I didn't see any of this on the XFX version. And so I don't even know if the XFX version had this equivalent stuff. My guess is that it probably does because they're all using a reference blower design. But let's go ahead and open this one up. So it's, it has the ASRock foam packaging, as well as an installation guide. And have some other stuff from ASRock here as well. There is a 1650 watt power supply that they've got. This is good because it has two of the 12 volt high power connectors that plug directly into the power supply. So we'll be building with this in the future for an AI pod, local on-prem AI pod. And then in the box, so again, I was kind of expecting to see one of these in the XFX ones. So I don't either mine for whatever reason didn't include one or XFX just doesn't ship adapters with the Radeon Pro card, which is kind of weird. I've seen different variants. So the ASRock one comes with a 3.8 pin to the 12 volt adapter. The Power Color one and the Gigabyte one, I believe come with the two 8 pin which is actually all that's needed for this because this is a 300 watt GPU. So two eight pins equals 300 watts. So the third one is really unnecessary because then technically that would mean 450 watts. So here is the GPU itself. So it is a metal shroud. It's a blower style design, it has the Radeon logo there, the ASRock logo over here. I don't think there's any RGB. I don't expect there to be any RGB on a professional card like this. Um, but it does have a nice backplate. Overall, it's not the bland one that has nothing on it from XFX, unless you're someone who prefers that. Although I do think the reference AMD look on the front part of the shroud looks better than what ASRock has done here. But ASRock's backplate is nicer, and usually in a computer you're going to see the backplate more often than the actual front. On the back, they're sticking with the reference design. You can see the heat sink in there with the vapor chamber attached to the GPU block. And then we have four DisplayPort 2.1 on the back here. So overall, it is what I expected. It is a reference card. It is a two slot design and it's a blower style, which means it's gonna be loud and it, it's impractical for gaming. You wouldn't wanna buy this for gaming. Now, technically you can game with this GPU, totally fine, um, but you're probably gonna have to power limit it because the blower style fan is gonna get super loud unless ASRock has tuned it specifically with, I don't know, different power limits or whatever, or they're just gonna run it at higher temperatures. But my experience with the XFX card is that at stock, it gets super loud while playing games. So it's really meant for AI or rendering workloads because those are kind of short bursts and it's not running continuously, unlike a game. So the noise level for those applications isn't that big of a deal. But for gaming, this is kind of a no-go just because of the noise on a blower style. But because it's two slot, it has the infamous 12 volt high power cable there. But because it's two slot, you can run up to four of these in a single Threadripper PC. So I think uh, two is a good number, like dual of these is really good. If you're somebody who wants to run local on-prem AI inferencing models, you don't wanna rely on the cloud, you don't wanna pay for any cloud services, you just wanna do everything yourself. This is a really good choice because it has 32 gigabytes. And if you have a pair of them, now you have 64 gigabytes. So now you're able to get, you're able to run models across both GPUs that normally would require something like an RTX 
Pro 6000, for example. So if you guys found this video useful, if you're curious in this GPU, I have uh, links in the description of the video below. And stay tuned for more content on the R9700. Until then, thanks and I'll see you next time.